This time on the show, TrueCrypt inside and out. I protect my netbook from Conboot with full disk encryption, and Darren shows off hidden volumes and key files. All that and more, this episode of Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoDaddy, Squarespace, Gamefly, and viewers like you. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Hack 5. I'm Matt Lestock. I'm Shannon Morse. And Darren is doing what Darren does best. Where did he go? I don't know. Wow. Doesn't matter. It's our episode today. Today we're going to be talking to you guys about drive encryption. Now, what is drive encryption? Well, you've all had the nightmares about your laptop up and disappearing in the middle of the night. Yeah. Out of your car, something like that. To the point where... That would be bad. If you were in a high profile position, like say a Paul or... You know, somebody who works at a company that is crazy a confidential. Bank. A bank. Uh, that data needs to be protected. Yes, um, it does. So, real quick, uh, give you an example here. Uh, Ernst and Young lost data on a laptop that was stolen from a car. That's it. It was just stolen right out of a car, and there goes all your security. Right out of the back seat, um, and uh, you know, it, it contains. Social security numbers, your address, your name, your date of birth. This is all the, the, the key ingredients oh. that identity thieves need to destroy your life. And That's make, all they need. And, yeah, yeah, and make your life a living hell that will take way more money than you could possibly ever have to try and fix. Um, so real quick, let's give you an example of how easy it is to actually bypass the quote unquote security uh, of a Windows machine, which is deployed in, you know, what is it, eight? <laughs> yeah. Nine out of ten businesses. It's, it's out there. super, super easy. I'm going to show it off on Darren's laptop. I'm using this thing called Comboot, which I showed off um, two episodes prior. So I just have to press enter at the uh, boot screen. Once it gets to the Cryptos Logic menu, I just press enter. And we got some cute little ASCII art. I just press enter again. Okay. So all I've done so far is press enter just a couple of times, and then once it gets to the Windows login screen, which looks completely normal, all I have to do is push in, you know, I don't, I don't know the password, I'll just put Darren's a dumb nut. Enter. Oh, oh look at that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in his machine. Whatever you just typed uh, definitely wasn't his password, because I know his password, <laughs> at I least do too. this machine. So uh, <laughs> all it takes is one of these. Uh, that's it. To bypass. A cute little ISO file. That's all you need. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> My bad. All right. So, so we've got the machine, and this could have all been prevented if we would have installed encryption on On his the hard drive. But we didn't. So now Darren's life has just been destroyed because I'm sure he's got some really sensitive data on the... Yeah, credit cards. Um, basically, this. Uh, <laughs> I could basically, you know, I could probably clone credit cards if he had, you know, the yeah. information on there. Create my own credit cards. That's so yeah, true. just uh, just to let you guys know, um, we're going to show you how to protect against this. Uh, talk about both in the corporate environment and doing it yourself. But first, we want to talk to you about. The Hack Five Meetup, which I'm stoked about because I actually get to attend it. Yes. Oh, they can't bad so if I wasn't excited. there. You yeah. Know, boom. Fist bump. Take it away, Darren. That's right, guys. I am super stoked because we are having our very first ever Hack Five Meetup, and we are celebrating our, our four years of podcasting, the uh, upcoming sixth season, and we hope that you guys can make it out August 15th at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. It's uh, open to all ages. We're gonna have uh, well, beer and hacking and roller coasters and more beer. It's all the details are over at hack5meetup.squarespace.com. We really hope you guys come down. That's where you can find all the information about getting the tickets for Bush Gardens. It's it's about 60 bucks. Uh, and, uh, and, and the components afterwards, which won't have any sort of entrance fee. If you just want to come down for the night and chill at the pub, that'll be cool too. And, um, and we hope you guys come down. We've got all the details, hotels, all the fun stuff that you need to plan a trip. I mean, it's two months out, so want to let you know far in advance so we can get the best ever Hack 5 meetup, the first ever Hack 5 meetup, 
in Williamsburg, Virginia. It's going to be epic. We really hope you can come out August 15th. Okay, well, with all that said, and hopefully Matt giving me my wallet back now, um, I'm gonna let you know that in a moment, Shannon's going to be showing you all sorts of cool ways that you can encrypt your hard drive and uh, keep it you know, safe from, well, Paul, really. And, <laughs> and until then, I want to thank our wonderful sponsor, Squarespace. This is one of the many reasons why Squarespace is the fastest and easiest way to build a beautiful and powerful website. Right now, I'm adding an RSVP form to hack5meetup.squarespace.com. I love the fact that there's absolutely no code required. Get a two-week free trial at squarespace.com to see why we're so crazy about them, and be sure to use promo code HACK5 to save 10% off the life of your service and support the show. And don't forget, there's just a few days remaining in Squarespace iPhone giveaway, so be sure to use pound Squarespace in your tweets to be entered into their daily drawing until July 8th. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. All right, guys, so here we are. We're gonna actually show you how to protect your data. Uh, unfortunately, the tool that we're gonna use, I can't use uh, in a corporate environment. There's no centralized management wow. console. There's no recovery, you know, single recovery system that we can actually use for support right. personnel. Uh, but on a corporate environment, you do have options. There are solutions from McAfee, uh, Encryption Plus, hard disk encryption, I think, is from Guardian Edge. And then there's also one from RSA, which, uh, you know, they, they do some Windows password syncing if you want to and stuff like that and, you know, centralized recovery consoles. So makes a sysadmin's life a whole lot easier when you actually have to, to work around these things. But what we're talking about today is... Open source. It's TrueCrypt. Yay! TrueCrypt is completely free. It's open source to anybody that needs to use it. It's an incredibly fast download, which is really nice. Um, you can do everything from encrypting your entire hard drive to just certain pieces of data, okay. pretty much anything that you want to. But today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to encrypt your entire hard drive. Sweet. Yes. Drive encryption. So there's a couple of choices on the front first screen. You can do encrypt system partition or drive, or you can just go to create volume. I like just create volume because it's one little button. It's wonderful. And I'm encrypting the system partition or the entire system drive. So we're going to encrypt the whole drive instead of just the Windows system partition. Right. And it's going to say, hey, if this partition is not acceptable, you can go back and choose to encrypt only system partition instead. Blah, blah, blah. You just press OK with that. Um, host protected area. Certain netbooks have a host protected area, and they use this to store everything from tools to data for RAID, all sorts of different things. Um, so basically, it's, it's like your recovery partition kind of thing, the yeah. tools that they so, install to make your life easier if you screw up your computer royally. So from what I've heard online from the different tutorials that I've read about this is you shouldn't encrypt your host protected area, just to be on the safe side. So I'll choose no on that. Single boot, multi-boot, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. I'm a single booter. Oops. Next one is encryption options. This is all your standard encryption options. Okay, AES. So AES, Serpent, Twinfish, right. Blowfish. Sweet. So I'll just stick with AES. And then you choose your password. This is pretty cool because if you choose a password that's under 20 characters, it's going to come up and say, hey, it's a lot easier to break a 20 character password than it is something over 20 characters. And it'll keep on saying that until you get something that's over 20. So I'll put in, um, let's see. Oh, and you also have to do capitalization and numbers. This is kind of interesting and weird all at the same time. So it says you're supposed to move your mouse around for a long time just to get a very, very randomized amount of keys. Mm -hmm. um, it's very magical, in my opinion. Basically, what it's doing <laughs> is it's taking your cursor position and translating that into key values so that it can generate your key uh, based on completely random coordinates. That's what it's doing. So I move it around for like a minute or two and then press next. And you see I have my header key and my master key. Ta-da! Press next again. Now, this is the part that kind of screwed me up when I was doing this on my netbook. Um, the thing with my netbook is it doesn't have a CD-ROM drive. With encryption on your full disk drive, 
it's going to tell you that you have to make a rescue disk okay. via a CD. You have to. So I'm going to go to browse and I'm just going to create this thing called rescue disk .iso. Okay. I'm going to save that. And then I press next. And then it says it's been created and it's been stored, so that's good. And then okay. I press next again. See, it's going to tell me you haven't burned a disk yet, so you can't go on yet. You have to create this rescue disk just in case. So basically, the, the actual application is looking out for you. Yes, it is. It's protecting you just in case because you, you need a rescue disk. Okay. So how do we get by this on a netbook, which obviously doesn't have a CD-ROM drive? This is what I Googled. I found this really cool program called WinCD EMU. It's an emulator. You basically just install it, you, um, you run it, and then you create CD emulations on your computer. So you can turn little flash drives or little um, SD cards and make those work as if they are CDs. So okay. you can put your ISO on there and you can skip this part and it'll let you go ahead. So basically, can we use something like Daemon Tools or Power ISO just to mount the ISO, have it scan it, and then say, if we wanted to live dangerously, that is, just basically any hard, yeah. any ISO mounting utility that makes it look like a CD-ROM drive. Yes, exactly, we can do that. exactly. That's what it's doing. That's okay. exactly what you're going for is making it look like it's a CD-ROM. Gotcha. You're basically tricking TrueCrypt so you can get around this part if it you don't have a CD drive. You could be shooting yourself in the foot later on down the you road. You could be. Yeah, it might hurt very much. Don't come bitching to me if. You Okay, so after that, you get to the next screen, which is basically just um, telling you to do a test run. So you choose to do the test run, you press OK, and it restarts your computer. Mm -hmm. And once it gets to the restart screen, you're going to see, com um, not combo, TrueCrypt uh, boot up on your screen, and it's going to ask you for the password that you just created. So you're going to type that in. Okay, so it boots up back into the screen, back into Windows, and then once it gets back to your uh, login, you log in just like you usually do with your usual password and mm -hmm. everything. And then um, TrueCrypt automatically pops back up and it says your, um, your test run is completely done. And then you can say, okay, you can encrypt now. So you choose encrypt. And then it takes a good two hours to encrypt your hard drive. <laughs> yeah, depending, if you guys are running on a netbook, obviously the Atom processor is it exactly the fastest thing in the no, world? No, it's not. So, yeah, mine took a long time to encrypt, a good so, two, three hours. Yeah, depending on the hard drive speed, uh, the spindle speed, as well as the processor speed inside of the machine that you're doing it on, will all dictate how long your drive encryption actually takes. Right. And once it's completely done, it says your encryption is complete. Yay! And you are good to go. So what are some of the caveats of running full disk encryption? One thing about this, doing the whole full encryption thing, is that y you might notice a 1% to 2% full system performance hit. It, it, if you're on like a Pentium 2, it might slow you down, but if you're on one of the newer modern models of PCs and netbooks, you're probably not going to notice a difference. Yeah. Okay. And now where do we go? We do. Also, if you guys want to find out more information about this, you can go to TrueCrypt.org and download your own copy. Check it out. It's a great, great program. And I also have show notes over at Snumpsy.com. Thank you very much. I will You're be welcome. sure to make sure. I will be sure to make sure. Sure to make sure. Oh, we were just full of fail today. <laughs> All right, well, the guys over there failing, I want to let you guys know about the contest that is still going on. This is based on the previous episode, 519, where we built a white box ESXi server for $2,000. And we thought, hey, what would you guys do with two grand to build your beautiful little white box? And we have seen some awesome, uh, just, just crazy ideas coming from you guys in which, you know, you build mini ITX raids and, and, and ESX boxes that like target the SCSI and the good stuff. Anyway, so if you are one of these system builders that totally thinks on the hardware level, want to get in on this, it's the episode 519 release thread at hack5.org slash forms. And that is where you can post your $2,000 specs and why you chose those components. And uh, we're watching those and we're reading those and we're like, damn, there's some really cool stuff going on. So anyway, uh, enter there because you will be eligible to win cool Hack 5 swag from the Hack Shop, including the very last Hack 5 shooter. It is awesomeness. So um, with all that said, I want to thank our sponsor, GoDaddy.
Keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and your crazy ex-roommate. Private domain registration from GoDaddy.com protects your privacy by keeping your address, phone number, and more out of the public database. Check out Revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all of our GoDaddy codes and offers. I will be back in just a bit with a little bit of plausible deniability in TrueCrypt. I want to let everybody know that Gamefly is an amazing service. They are the largest online video game rental service and offer a choice of over 6,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. You can also purchase a game if you fall in love with it. They'll send you the box and the manual for a nominal fee. Head on over to Gamefly.com slash hack5 to get two-week free trial membership, Gamefly.com slash hack5. This, my friends, is a situation you never want to be in. What is the password to the encrypted file? I will never tell you. It's loaded. So? You really want to die? No, I'm not that much of a weetard. My password is goldfish45. Thank you. You can now have my picture of myself as a monkey encrypted in my true crypt volume. Did you say that was? Yeah. But no. It's not. I mean, this is, this is the, the coolest, most amazing feature, the splendiferousness of TrueCrypt, right? Open source goodness with plausible deniability. You know what that means? That means that uh, I got the folder full of, you know, financial stuff here, right? And maybe I'm Enron, so I got another folder full of financial stuff. <laughs> and I have a volume within a volume, and you don't know that there's a volume inside the volume. Let me break it down, because it's really cool open source goodness. Um, basically, Plausible deniability means that I can, um, I can, like I said, hide something within something and have two passwords to a volume. But one of the passwords opens what may look like, you know, the embarrassing photos of me as a monkey or something. Anyway, and then the other one has the actual secret data, and you can never tell that the hidden volume exists within the outer volume. And that is a photo of uh, you as a. Um, as a chihuahua or something on a roller coaster. I mean, it, it <laughs> happens, right? But it's super secret data, and I want to make sure that it's secure. So let's go ahead and do it. So how do right? you access it without them knowing it's there? Oh, it's easy, man. Let me show you. Check this out, right? So we pull up TrueCrypt just like we would, and uh, to, to as Shannon has shown you to, you to uh, create a you know uh, entire hard Old drive daily hard drive encryption. And we're going to create a new volume here. And I'm going to create an encrypted file container, and I'm going to create a hidden volume, right? And we're going to do it in normal mode, so we're going to create both the uh, both the regular encrypted volume and then the hidden one inside of it. Okay. So we're going to go next, right? And uh, we are going to select a file. We're going to create a new file in C clone backslash temp3 because I'm old school, and we're going to call it hidden volume because I'm not very creative. .tc for TrueCrypt, right? And we're going to go next, and just like we would. We're going to, yeah, we're going to go AES because that's cool. And we're going to make it a 100 megabyte uh, file here, right? Okay. And we're going to give it a password that's pretty lame. Evil. Okay, I'm actually going to make this a little bit cooler and check this box here that says use key files. Check this out, right? So you say use key files, right? And I go and add a key file here. And back in temp3, I actually have a key file here if I preview it. Where you, you're going to understand what I'm talking about, right? That's a picture <laughs> of uh, Paul, our associate producer, getting his head shaved uh, like a space wow. monkey. So anyway, we're going to use that as our key file. What that means is that whenever we want to unencrypt this partition, this volume, if you will, um, we are actually going to need that file present, which is cool because it's two-factor authentication. It's not just something I know, like a password. It's something I have, like a file. And this file could live on a USB drive. They have a safety deposit box, and then really cool stuff with you know Mini Coopers and explosions. So let's uh, just go ahead and format this fat, and it's all good. All right. So now it's time to create 
um, some outer volume content. So we're going to open the outer volume. So this right here, my Z drive, is that encrypted volume that we just created. It's 100 megabytes big. And I'm going to put this file here, secret.jpg. It's got a picture of you know, the D monkey, right? We're going to throw that in there. Great. So we've got some content in there. This is to say that if you had a gun pointed to me that wasn't just a Wii zapper and I gave you this password, you would see that there's actually some embarrassing documents or some financial data or whatever. You put some screwball stuff in there that you would potentially want to really Or falsified. Hide. Falsified, totally, right? Um, just like your birth certificate. So what we're, we're going to do next is go next in this uh, wizard here, and we are finally going to create the hidden volume within, right? So we're going to go do AES just like the other one. We could do something crazy like Serpent 2 Fish AES, but, you know, AES is good, right? And here's the thing. It has determined that the maximal, maximum possible hidden volume size is 98.91 megabytes, right? Because we have the existing 100 meg container. Oh, We've got smaller. a file inside of it. It has to be smaller. And here's something very important to, to understand. If we made this, um, this, uh, this hidden volume inside 98.91 uh, megs, and then we later on added something else to this uh, outer volume, it would overwrite our existing volume, our hidden volume within. So you know what? It's just a little JPEG I want to actually keep really, really hidden. So I'm going to make this like a 2 meg, right? So we're going to go ahead and make that a 2 meg hidden. We're going to give it a super secret password. And we're going to use a key file again. And let's go ahead and add that file, which just so happens to be a photo of you looking pretty dumb. Anyway, <laughs> uh, oh. go imagine that. Uh, and we're going to hit OK. And <laughs> next. And again, format it fat, and boom, there we go. And a little warning about, hey, don't overwrite this stuff. It's going to be bad, right? So here we go. We have gone ahead and created a outer volume that is secret, and then a hidden volume within that's only two megs that's super secret, OK? So all we have to do to actually load this up and, and be able to get to our, our super secret cool stuff here is select a file. And remember, we made that in temp3, and we called it hiddenvolume.tc. And we're going to go ahead and mount that on our Z drive. And here's the cool thing, right? We could put either password in here right now. Now, we know that the picture of Darren Monkey is in the original volume. Outer but the, volume. The outer volume. But the super secret one that we really want the juicy stuff is in the hidden one. So let's go ahead and enter that password. OK, and let's use a key file. Choose the key file. And remember, this is a USB drive that we left inside of our drywall at the uh, first house we ever lived in in like the sub-basement or something like that. And OK. And now if I just double click on the Z drive here, I have my volume that I can go ahead and put my super secret data in. And now it is totally super secure. And nobody will be messing with my picture of you on a roller coaster at Bush Gardens Williamsburg as a dog or something. I don't know. It just happens, right? <laughs> Excellent. I really wish this was real. Yeah. <laughs> In an alternate universe in which gamers are pro and elite and uber, it is. Well, no, I mean, cool. I mean, the, the thing about it is, you know, people our age nowadays, <clears throat> we don't keep paper records. Right. <laughs> Everything so, in life is right. digital. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it, obviously you're going to have to store away your birth certificate and your social security number for driver's licenses and passports and stuff like that. That's all well and good. Mm -hmm. But... Bank information, you know, uh, credit card information, you know, account information for your home equity, whatever. We're just blah, personal blah, blah. stuff. You yeah, know? you know, so yeah. like you keep a, I don't know, audio, video diary, something. So often whatever. we just dump it in either the C, the My Docs, or some folder that we created under, you know, one of them, and it it, it gets to the point where you're like, well, you know what? I should probably put that somewhere that nobody's gonna be like. Oh, what's that? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's better than putting your porn in Windows System 32 backslash drivers. Oh, and whoa, killer! What? Whoa! I just what? Anyway, I'm just and saying. you would know about this? Why? It's, no, no, no reason. I'm just saying. That, like I have read mm -hmm. on the internets, which, from what I understand, is for porn, that this could happen, and we would love to hear what you guys think uh, of you know what. No, never mind. I was about to say, tell us what you use TrueCrypt for on the forums. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys can imagine a million different reasons why you would want to do this. Oh, spider. Shannon is freaked out by a spider, so I think we should wrap this up. So I can kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's 
freaks out. It's really bad. Um, we want to let you guys know that uh, we, we uh, encourage your feedback. Feedback at hack5.org is where you can get in touch with us. Uh, we'd like to hear what you think about the episodes, especially when we're playing around with formats and tweaking stuff and just having a good time. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I have gotten everybody's... Uh, we, we did have the ESX uh, white box stuff. And yeah. we, we've been taking a look at the forums. I've been Next week. I've been getting ridiculous amounts of email. And I am reading every single one, even if I'm not replying to every single one. So trust me, I will get to you eventually. Please don't flame me and write me, you know, 30,000 emails and say, hey, we're not my shit. I'm getting. We do read all of the feedback. If we don't reply, yeah. sorry, we're so We've been swamped. Uh, yeah, the last couple episodes have really killed my inbox. I think I'm up to 297 uh, red emails. I got to beat by three. Excuse me. Oh, Wait and <laughs> learn to drink. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, so for all of us here at Hack5, we are reminding you to trust your technical loss. Then it's a bloopers already. <laughs> This show's awesome! Oh. Dude, I heard you thinking and I was like, yes! Don't touch my mustache. I'm just kidding. I don't have a mustache. <laughs> I got some hot Italian salsa right here. Ah! Alright guys, so here we are, the meat of the show. We're gonna be talking to you guys about... <laughs> No. I am the meat no. of the show. No. <laughs> right <Me> here. No. <laughs> <laughs> it still smells good. Wow, she caught it. You can't. <laughs> you can hear my thoughts now, Jester. That's that's insane. Like, yeah. Kevin's yeah. All right. I'm not holding on. I'm not holding on. I won't. What? You're my wingman. I'll be my wingman anytime. I'm good. <laughs>